I hope that you have enjoyed the, uh, the, the series that we've been going through, the amazing Jesus. Uh, walking through the first two chapters of the Gospel of Mark, we talk about Jesus, how he has transformed lives. And last week, and if you weren't here last week, we talked about audacious faith. Not just like, all right, regular faith, audacious faith, ready to, to do amazing things, you know, risk beyond what you normally would uh, because you believe. You know, these, these four guys who bring this, this man who's paralyzed before Jesus. And in, in, in the middle of this, they have such faith that Jesus can heal this guy. He says, oh, he can't get in the building. Sorry, but no, no, he's coming here. We're going to come in through the roof because we have such faith that Jesus can heal this man. Uh, and Jesus looked at the faith of his friends and healed this man. Uh, it was just a, a wonderful story of our, our, our wonderful, amazing Jesus. So I, I love creative people like that that have such faith. I want to, I want to read on in, in Mark chapter 2. Uh, and we're just going to continue where we left off on, on verse 13. You can read along with me. We'll have it on the screen. Then Jesus went out to the lake shore again and taught the crowds that were coming. As he walked along, he saw Levi, son of Alphaeus, sitting at his tax collector's booth. Follow me and be my disciple. Jesus said to him, so Levi got up and followed him. Later, Levi invited Jesus and his disciples to his home as dinner guests, along with many tax collectors and other disreputable sinners, in case there's any distinction there between sinners and just normal sinners and disreputable ones. These were really good at it. That's where I go. These were many people of, his, of this kind among Jesus' followers. But when G the teachers of the religious law who were Pharisees saw him eating with tax collectors and other sinners, they asked his disciples, why does Jesus eat with this scum? When Jesus heard this, he told them, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick people do. I have come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know they are sinners. Pray with me before we go any further. Jesus, we ask your presence and your blessing on the remainder of our time here today. Because without focus on you, it's all a bunch of rambling words and pointless talk. It's you who gives us life. It's you who we trust for the forgiveness of our sins. Be real in us today. And make this Bible come alive in our hearts. And we thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, I'm confident no consultant ever said, Jesus, I, you know, fill up a, a grouping of people the way you're doing it. You know, this is, the, this is really good. You know, you're going to start with the core of your group and go and find four fishermen. Nobody says that. You want high, high ability leaders to be the core of your group. And then these four fishermen, they, they're, kind of, they're kind of rough. They talk like fishermen. You know, maybe in, in our world we'd say, well, they talk like uh, construction workers. Uh, they're, they're kind of rough around the edges. These are people who have a quick temper. It was two of them. You had Peter and Andrew who were brothers, and then James and John who were brothers, and these James and John were called the th sons of thunder. You know, the, Jesus goes in later in the, in, the, in the story, Jesus goes into this town, and the town people say, no, no, we don't want you here, go away. And it was James and John that said, hey, should we just like call down, you know, destroy this whole city? You know, that, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty revenge-filled. Those aren't people that you want as your core. Quick temper, you don't agree with you? So God, just zap them. You know, that's not how you want to do it. But Jesus says, this is the core of my people. And on top of that, they bring in this guy named Levi. You know, Levi was, it's a name from one of the 12 tribes. 
Uh, the, all the tribes of Israel, Levi was one. It was given by his parents most likely. This is the same person as is called Matthew. Jesus probably said, all right, you're going to be Matthew. And Matthew means gift of God. You know, and Jesus changed him in that way. But Levi is a tax collector. And, and we have this idea that, you know, he sits in an office like the IRS, but he was like a mobile tax collector. He's got this table he sets out wherever he wants to collect and he can collect in all the area and there's a good idea that these four fishermen knew Levi the tax collector and it, it doesn't say that and I'm, I'm just going to conjecture on this one but this is how it would play out you know Peter and, and his brothers and the other people they would they would come in from a night of fishing Oh, we're going to make a killing at the market. We caught so much fish. This is wonderful. And then all of a sudden there's Matthew or Levi. He's, he's sitting at the, the dock saying, Guys, you did well today. Caught a lot of fish. Awesome. Oh, I'm so proud of you. But you know what? There's this Sea of Galilee usage tax that has to be paid before you can take these fish to market. And they go, what? The Sea of Galilee usage tax? We don't know about this. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it, we just put it into effect. Uh, it's going to take at least 50% of your profit right there. It's like, what? How is that going to work? Oh, no, no, there's more. You know, there is the, the endangered species tax that we've got to protect the fish in, in the Sea of Galilee. And you know, and then there's the, the boater's licensing fee. I got a feeling it's going to be 95% of all of your profits. And you're going to put these fishermen who feel like they have just been wrung out by someone like Levi, and you're going to put them in the same group. This, this is what we're, we're talking about. Jesus says, oh, this is, these are my people. Jesus calls radically different people and pulls them into the same group. You know, look at yourselves. If we're radically different people, yet he says, I'm bringing you together as my people. And, and we're just think of this, like, well, how would he do this? Why would he do this? Because Jesus intentionally chose Levi. He intentionally chose him. He said, follow me. Well, that seems just kind of strange. This is why. Jesus offers grace to all those who know that they're sinners. He offers grace to everyone who says, I know that I am separated from God. I know this. And he says, oh, come and be my people. I'm, I am your way. Jesus says, I have come to call not those who think they're righteous, but I have come to call those who know that they're sinners separated from God. And, and that's maybe our question for some of us today. Is that, is that you? Do, you? do you know that you're, you're a sinner separated from God? And you know, I, I think that I am. Do you know it? That you're just separated from God. That's not how he's planned it to be. Well, Levi says, I know where I'm at. I, I know this. And then when he goes one step further, he says, I'm going to throw a party because this Jesus has changed me. And he, 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 oh, we don't know that Levi's parties were, maybe they were legendary. Everybody comes to Levi's parties. You know, it's the biggest thing in town. You know, maybe it was that way. Or maybe it was just, this is so life-changing. And I need to invite people to know this as well. And, and maybe that was the way it is. And either way, there was people on all across the spectrum that come to his party. He's got the, these, the Jesus comes, he's, because he says specifically, Jesus, come to my party. You've changed me. You need to come to my party. Well, and the four fishermen come. Those guys that are a little bit, uh, you know, the anger issue people, you know, they come. And then all of a sudden, there was other people that he hung around. You know, Levi had these, uh, tax collectors always had, well, we call them muscle, 
right? The enforcers. So if the fishermen say, you know, I, I don't want to pay my tax. Well, you know, these big guys with swords and spears, they're going to help you. And, and Levi was always surrounded by big people with swords and stuff. So those types of people, they don't, they don't know. They, some, some don't even care about Jewish people. But those are people he hung out with. He, he hung out with other people that they didn't know all the rules either. You know, don't you like it? I, I like it. When someone comes to church and they don't know all the rules. They just don't know all the rules yet. Like, all right, you stand when you're supposed to stand and you sit when you're supposed to sit and you're supposed to be quiet when you're supposed to be quiet. You know, and they don't know those yet. <laughs> my, my mom invited, a, her name was Norma. It, she was a friend of hers. Uh, and she invited Norma to church. And it, my church was was very, uh, let's just say rigid. Just like that, we, it, there was lots of things you needed to know that they, nobody told you about. But, and they didn't tell Norma before she came. I'm even thinking she came to church in jeans. Ooh, you just don't do that. There's a dress code here. You know, for us, we only got to wear corduroy pants if it wasn't on Sunday and we had to go to church. You know, there's rules here. She didn't know these things. And then when they were singing, she held that book, this hymn book with both hands. And, and those notes, I don't think they made any difference to her because she just sang as loudly as she could and definitely off key. And everybody around us knew that Norma was singing and sometimes they'd look back like, are you done yet? No, I'm not done yet. I'm singing the song. And she was so loud and she didn't know that you were supposed to be quiet if you couldn't hit those notes. You know, you let other people who know how to sing, they sing the, the notes, especially the high ones. You know, and she didn't know these rules. I love people like that. Who would you invite to your party especially those that don't know the rules on how to be a, a believer. Someone that you say, you know, they don't, they don't, they're a little rough around the edges. Or they, they're not the stereotypical person who is seeking after Jesus. If you were throwing a party because you said, Jesus has changed my life, who would you invite? Hopefully you'd invite some people that just don't know all the rules yet. Because Jesus said, I have come not to call those who think they're righteous. I've come to call those who know that they're sinners. You know, here's, here's an easy one. You know, that you can invite somebody to something. We're, we're having a cornhole. You know, you see this, right? We put it up here. You know, people online can't see this. But we even put it out here as an example. This is what's going to happen. This is a little close uh, we have it in the, the fireside room. You can practice and you can see how well you can do against Roger. Uh, but this, we're, we set it out so that you say, that's another thing I can invite my friend to. And may, especially those that might not know the, all the rules, but they love playing cornhole. Let's invite them and say, let's, let's have this a part of one step closer to encountering Jesus. Just one step closer. You know, maybe they haven't set step uh, one foot in front of a church in years. They think if I step a foot in that church, the church is going to fall down. You know, it's just going to happen that way. But it's just one step closer that they can encounter Jesus. You know, that's, that's the idea. You know, we, we throw parties and, and have events like this for people like that that they can get one step closer to knowing Jesus. Well, that, I, we know that that's kind of intimidating. But, but let me think of this. The, the rest of our time, I want, you to, I want you to think about it. Who would you invite to your party? You know, I want to take a couple steps here so that, that we can zero in on who we want to invite to tell about the Jesus that has changed our lives. There we go. Let me give you one. The, the, the tax man 
Levi. He, he meets Jesus, he throws a party, and he invites everybody in his circles. He doesn't have to go clear across the city to find people to invite. He, he, he invites those who are in his circles. His work circle. Hey, you know what? I'll get those soldiers, those rough soldiers to come in. Or, or maybe those, those people of questionable uh, repute. Um, they'll come in as well. And so work environments, maybe the, the neighborhood, people who are next door neighbors, they, he would invite them. Maybe he even invited family members. But it, you don't have to go too far to see people that we want to invite. And that's where it starts. We need to pray for them. It, it, it seems like, all right, Matt, you have to start with prayer, yes. We have to. Because that's building block number one there. Because we bring, we talk to Jesus about this person before we talk to that person about Jesus. That's how so important it is. And our hope here at Celebration is that you have at least two people that you're intentionally praying about. Intentionally. They, they don't know Jesus. And, and, and you are saying, God, I want them to know Jesus. He's transformed my life. I want them to know you. I want them to know you. And these two come to mind every time the pastor says, who are you praying for? Every time these two come up. Because you're intentionally praying for them. You're intentionally praying for them. It, that might be the biggest thing for us to remember today. That you're going to pray for at least two people. And some of them are family members. Some, some of those are, are, are really close to you, that you know them so deeply. Pray for them. If, if anything else, make sure that you're bringing those people before Jesus all the time. Write their names on your, your, your mirror in the bathroom so you know all the time, hey, if I pray for these two today, oh, pray for them. But then pray for opportunities. Pray for an opportunity to lead them closer to Jesus. You know, celebrate this event right here, the, the, the cornhole, it's, it's called a, a fishing pool event. You know, if you haven't been around celebration for a long time, we have... We, we call these fishing pool event as in we want to gather people so it's a higher concentration of people around the, the Christians so that we can work with people who don't know him. You know, the, the, the hot dog roast is another one of those. That, that's in next week's Sunday. Hopefully you're coming to that one. But in any way, we're looking for ways to lead them one step closer to an encounter with Jesus. Oh, I love coming to, to... Here, I'll give you an example. This is how it works. Hey, bud, what are you doing next weekend? Um, I don't know. I'm just going to hang out. Oh, I got something for you. Wednesday, we're going to have cornhole. Oh, I like playing cornhole. Hey, we're doing it at church. There's this guy, Roger. He's like the, the king cornhole player. Nobody can beat him. He's taking all comers. <laughs> that I worked you in twice already. <laughs> but, but it's that way. It's just an easy conversation. And some people will make up an excuse. Oh, yeah, I got I to gotta arrange my sock drawer on Wednesday. Sorry, I can't come. And it's like, hey, we'll go to the next one. Guess what? We're doing it the next Wednesday as well. You can come. You know, it's either way. But we want to take one step closer. There's an opportunity to bring them closer to an encounter with Jesus. And, and that's just one way. It's, it, it could be anything. It could be cornhole. We could play darts or whatever you want to do. But it's just another opportunity. We want to pray for opportunities. You know, Levi, he doesn't know a lot of theology, but he knows that Jesus has transformed his life. He's offered him forgiveness for sins. And he knows enough to invite people around him to say, let me tell you about the Jesus who's forgiven my sins. Now, you don't have to be a, a doctoral pastor. You know, I'm not one. But I know what Jesus has done for me. Let me, let me give you another one. 
You want to know what you want to know your story and how that fits into God's story. And I know that that in, in, at the sense of it, you're going. How does that make sense? How does my story fit into God's big story? You know, God's big story. I'll tell you, God's big story is that I, He has made us to be in relationship with Him, but our sin has separated us from Him. And Jesus came to pay the price for our sins and to bring us back in that relationship. That's God's big story. And whoever you are, wherever you are, that's His story for you. To bring you back in relationship with Him. And your story specifically is how you have been brought back into that relationship. That's how your story fits into God's big story. And we need to know our story. And for, if, you, if you've talked with Jesus at all, you know your story. And that's the simplest thing to tell somebody. Hey, I'm going to throw a party because I know this Jesus. I know how my, he has brought me back in a relationship with him. This is the best thing ever. Let me tell you about it. We need to know our story within God's. Let me give you one last one, because we're talking about inviting people to know Jesus. The last one is, how can we just serve Him? You know, oftentimes we think, all right, I'm going to tell them about Jesus, and if they don't follow Jesus, done with them. We need to stay with them. These are people that you're praying for all the time. These are people that you're praying for opportunities to talk with them about Jesus. And just like last week, we, we talked about how people do not give up on anyone because God did not give up on us. We stay in their world. We find ways to, to be of help to them. We find ways to converse with them and to be respectful with them in any way that we might serve them to lead them one step closer in encounter with Jesus. And so often we just, we're done with people and, and we forget that we need to stay in their lives. Show them this great love of Jesus. Now, let me circle back a second. Let me circle back. Levi heard, follow me and be my disciple. Are you, are you his disciple? Have you heard Jesus call you and say, I love you. You have always been on my heart. You are always in my thoughts. Your artwork is on my refrigerator. You are always there for me, and I have called you to be in my, in my relationship with you. I, I want you to be my disciple. Learn from me. Right, did you hear that? Jesus is called not those who think, think that they're righteous, but those who know that they're sinners and need Jesus. You know, Levi, Levi heard that call and said, all right, if I follow Jesus, there's no turning back. There's no turning back here. I am either going to follow him or I'm going to be this tax collector all of my life because once I give up being a tax collector, somebody else is going to take that job. This is all in or I'm not. And Levi goes all in. He says, I'm there. There's no turning back. Only Jesus can remove the guilt of my sin. Only Jesus is the one who can forgive me. Only Jesus can be the Savior of my soul and the leader of my life. Is He yours? Is He yours? Jesus, in a voice as clear as possible, says to you today, follow me and be my disciple. And that is why Jesus came to town. Pray with me. Jesus, we confess our utter need of your grace. We, we've nothing in ourselves to bridge the separation between you and us. You are our only hope for forgiveness and peace. 
God, we ask You to forgive us when we, we believe that we're all good by ourselves. God, would You just drive us to see You as our only hope. To see our desperate need for forgiveness. Show us Your grace and mercy and Your love. Would You guide? Would You guard? Would You direct us this week as we live for You in all that we do? Jesus, we praise Your name. Amen.